How's it going guys? I'm Paper, cut to you with Planet Destiny, and I was fortunate enough to pick up one of the new hard mode primaries. This is the Oversoul Edict. It is a primary rifle that you can get from the Weight of Darkness zone in the Abyss. This is the first part of the raid, so it's probably going to be one of the first rifles that somebody picks up. It was one of the first ones I picked up on Tuesday, and I was fortunate enough to use it for the Nightfall with the Arc Burn. This was actually a lot of fun. I kind of went a little bit Arc crazy, got a little bit cocky, but in the end we ended up persevering. And I got 12 strange coins. Thank you, Bungie. So let's get down to breaking down this rifle. There's going to be a little bit of lag here where I change between the second and first scope, so you're going to notice the difference. The first scope focuses on giving you a little bit of extra range, and it has a nice field of view. The second scope is a little bit clunkier, it's a little thicker, but it has good target acquisition, which means that when you're aiming at another player, you're going to get a little bit more assistance from the auto aim. The last scope on the list gives us extra range, it also has very nice field of view on it. And if you want to switch between scopes, go ahead because all the recoil patterns are the same so you don't have to worry about adjusting your gameplay when you're switching between them. Now the second perk that you're allowed here is the full auto perk and to me that's actually a plus. I like not having to spam my ray trigger, it typically throws off my aim. But on this rifle it's kind of a problem, it's already a high rate of fire and we'll get into that a little bit later. In the middle tree we have the field scout perk and this is, you can't go wrong with field scout, it's going to give you 42 bullets instead of 30. The other two perks, they're more specialty perks that you're really going to be using if you're trying to do something specific. It's particularly good for small smaller levels where you really need to get those first shots off with the snapshot perk especially on pulse rifles I actually find that it gives you a pretty good advantage this is without and you're also going to see it with and you're going to notice that it's almost twice as fast and this high rate of fire pulse rifle is pretty much brought down by its low impact that's why you kind of want to use a snapshot sometimes because you need four bursts to kill a guy in the crucible and that's regardless of if you land them all in the head now with the fitted stock it turns this pulse rifle into a laser beam a broken laser that shoots intermittently and you'd figure it'd be pretty good but it's actually still kind of hard to use when you're using the full auto on this rifle you're kind of locked in this is not the kind of pulse rifle that you can aim and shoot and actually think about your shots it's not like the three little words where you're like okay I'm gonna time out my three shots and the guy's gonna die here once you're in full auto you're kind of locked in and if you're on a different rhythm than your opponent typically you're gonna end up missing a good amount of shots. The Dark Breaker perk as well as the perk that gives you increased damage against Hive Majors, the Hive Disruptor, work very well when you're using it on a primary rifle. I remember using the Song of Irut and I had a lot of problems with it because it had this perk as well where you can shoot through the night shields but I found that by the time I switched to my heavy ammo and that's even if I had heavy ammo on me usually the shields would already be down however when you're using it on a primary and your shots are actually registering you're typically going to be able to get some shots through your shields which is actually going to benefit you quite a bit and I'm going to show you guys some examples of killing this guy here because we've all done it if you're looking to get you or Ares to level 4 then I'm sure you're familiar with this guy and I'm going to show you a couple of examples this is with the raid pulse rifle the oversoul edict and this took out this knight in about 9 seconds this is the vanquisher 8 and it took about 10 seconds and that's because you get a little bit of extra damage on him from your perk and it also has the arc shield which means you're going to break that down because of the arc damage that the gun comes with this is the three little words and it doesn't even contend in here and that's kind of the problem with pulse rifles they're all actually pretty bad they all kind of follow bad juju other than the perks on that pulse rifle the pulse rifle itself is actually quite bad and i slowed this down just so you can see the values it gives you 95 with a crit and 277 bonus every couple bursts and I'm no mathematician so it's kind of hard for me to tell which weapon is doing the most damage like this is pretty decent 121 to the head but when you see the Suros regime go at him well you start to notice this is just a 300 and it's shooting for almost 150 for critical shots and it even goes up more as you get to the bottom half of the clip where its perk kicks in so with a 331 I really wouldn't see why you would use this weapon in the raid and if you look at the 123 Zyziggy, which is a pulse rifle that kind of resembles this one, it has a nice perk here. Kills with this weapon, reduce the cooldown of your grenade. So unless you're actually taking on a Hive Major, you're not going to see any benefits from this pulse rifle. 
And the more that I played with it, the more I found that I had to fall back to the old routine that I had when I first played with the three little words. It's that you have to pick all your engagements. You typically want to stay around your team and play more of a supportive role. When you're on your own, every engagement feels kind of sketchy and it doesn't matter if you're medium range, close range, or far range. It doesn't seem like this pulse rifle shines anywhere. In the close range engagements, you're going to end up getting killed by hand cannons. In the far range, you're going to be killed by scout rifles. I just don't understand where the pulse rifle really fits with the current damage model. I find that it's been one of those weapons that just gets no love here and this is coming from Bungie. Like I've been searching for the BR in this game for a while now. A gun that ends up rewarding, skilled, patient, timed out shots and you don't see that anywhere with any pulse rifle. So considering that it doesn't have an advantage at any range and this pulse rifle in particular actually has a very low range. I just don't see what you're supposed to do with it outside of killing Hive Majors. So on any other strike that doesn't have arc damage and there aren't have Hive Majors, this is going straight into the vault or you're probably going to break it down. And if you're doing good with this weapon, I assume it's because you're using your other weapons, which there's nothing wrong with that. But then again, why do you even want to equip this as a primary? And I don't want to complain too much. I was really going out of my way to find good things about this rifle. And when I first picked it up, I'm like, this thing feels great. It's fast. It has great stability. But the perks really didn't offer too much outside of Hive Majors. And after that, there was just nothing else that was special about it. It hits for a very low amount. Even though it's fast, it's just not offset. It's still a problem. Not being able to put on damage on guys fast is a huge problem in this game. So I'm going to give this thing two thumbs down I, I don't think I've given any weapon two thumbs down even the three little words felt a little bit better because you actually got to control your burst you actually had some control over how you used it and with here it's kind of like an assault rifle if you didn't know you were using a pulse rifle sometimes when you're shooting this it actually feels like an assault rifle it's that fast it's actually very hard to determine where a burst ends and where it begins but that little gap actually makes a difference so if you need some extra energy go ahead and break this down because since it comes from the first part of the raid you're probably going to be running into it quite a bit. I'm sorry I didn't have better news for everybody that was expecting a little bit more out of this pulse rifle but there it is. If you guys have anything to add make sure to leave it in the comments section. The only thing I didn't mention was that it does still suffer from the glitch on the full auto where sometimes the gun jams. You'll press the trigger down and it'll just stop shooting which is sometimes a problem but otherwise that's all I have to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm Paper, cut to you with Planet Destiny and I'll see you next time.